hypocritical. Exceedingly hypocritical. And then I've heard the other one. Oh, uh, in some communities, people have to use the public toilet. So what? Why? In 2050, Alaji Dr. Mahmoud, His Excellency Baumia, made a promise to the nation that in 18 months after assuming office, every home will have a toilet. Mm -hmm. Our water problems will come to an end as well. This is three years. So we are using our failure uh, to implement our election, election promises to, to keep our election promises and so on as an excuse not to lock down. And I'm frightened by this. You understand? Look, there is no policy option which doesn't have consequences. Every policy option has consequences. Those who make policies and implement policies at all times have to choose. They have to make choices. You understand? They have to make choices about consequences. Which consequences we are going to bear and which consequences we cannot bear. Right now, as we speak, the choice is between convenience... No, 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 no. Right now, as we speak, the choice is between inconvenience and death. Those are the two choices we face. Yes, people will be inconvenienced since there's a lockdown. Sure, there will be inconvenience. Everybody who is under lockdown suffers inconvenience, including those who have the means and those who do not have the means. Everybody will suffer some inconvenience. But if people do not suffer inconvenience, what will happen? Death! Mass death! People will die in their thousands. So this, these are the choices we have to make. Simple choice, inconveniencing people and allowing people to die in their thousands. And strangely, it appears that our policymakers are choosing the option which will lead to thousands of people dying rather than inconveniencing people. And they think they are being smart and sensible. Think about it. They think they are being smart and sensible. You are choosing an option which will not inconvenience people, fine. But which will lead to thousands of deaths. Sensible. That's how sensible they are. Incredible. I can't believe it. Kwame, we are in this current situation. This is a medical problem. And of course, I'm the first to admit that medical problems have psychological consequences. They have even psychological consequences can be seen as medical. But they have social, economic implications, they have political implications, they have all the implications. But first and foremost, this is a medical problem. So who should we be turning to? Ghana Medical Association, one week ago, one week ago, advised that we should have two things. One, total lockdown. And two, random mass testing. We are not doing any of those things that the Ghana Medical Association advised. So if you are not listening to the Ghana Medical Association, who are we going to listen to? GPRTU? <laughs> or Invisible Forces? The Ghana Medical Association, the Association of Professional Medical Practitioners. Now, three days ago, another organization of nurses and so on also issued the same statement that lockdown, lockdown, do random mass testing. Mm. We haven't done any of those. So when we say that we are consulting, consulting with who? Bogatanga Bulldogs? <laughs> who are we consulting with? Or Ghana Journalist Association? Or private newspaper publishers association. National Association of Hairdressers and Salud Cleaners. What is wrong with us? <laughs> Let us apply common sense. Very, very common sense. Small common sense. And we'll get out of this mess. In any case, as was indicated by 
Honorable ABA Fusemi, we are lucky. Hmm? The pandemic did not be begin in Ghana. The pandemic began in China. You understand? Italy became the epic center before, before we started panicking. You understand? Uh, 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 Iran had it before us, and so on. So, there's a record, there's a history of how people have dealt with that disease. And we know that the, the way we are dealing with the disease now is the same way Italy dealt with the disease yeah. and look at the dangerous yeah. consequences that Italy is having. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, our leaders not looking back See what happened in Wuhan. Mm. See what happened in, in, in Italy. See what is happening in the States. United States of America now. In UK. In see UK. what is happening in the UK now. Mm. Are they not aware? Mm. Are they not reading newspapers? Are they not watching the international news channels and so on? What is wrong with our leaders? What is wrong with our leaders? Leaders have a responsibility to think one of the responsibilities of leadership is to think. When leaders refuse to think, we are dead. What is this? Look at Italy. Last night, I posted videos huh, of the situation in Italy. To friends of mine, I'm sure some of you got, got the videos that I posted. The medical establishment in Italy is now so overwhelmed. Hospitals are full. They are treating patients okay. under trees. Yeah. 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 That's the reality in Italy today. They are treating Italy. <laughs> is treating patients under trees. Italy has gone on its knees to beg Cuba Keep to them send them doctors. Yes. You saw the videos of the Cuban, the Cuban medical personnel when so they, they arrived were, in Italy. They were applauding them. They arrived in Italy as national heroes. They were applauding them. And we are sitting here. Standing ovation. Now, we all know, as a fact, eh, that the only effective drug which is being used, which was used in China for China to overcome its problem, mm, is the drug which was developed by Cuban experts and which is being produced by China. What is the point of having a Cuban embassy here? We have a Cuban embassy here with a full-blown ambassador we have a Ghana embassy in Cuba with a full-blown ambassador. ambassador. What are we doing? We started dealing with the Cuban Medical Brigade long, 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 long before. Italy has just started. Mm. How many Cuban doctors do we have in Ghana? Why don't we have enough Cuban doctors in Ghana? And if you hear the story, you weep. Mm. Over the years, we have more treated Cuban mm. doctors. I went to Mampon to go and visit a team of Cuban doctors. Seven of them were living in one flat. Seven doctors. Seven doctors were living in one flat in Mampon, a crappy Mampon. I went to visit them. It came to a time when we were not paying their rent, and landlords started ejecting them from their houses. There was a long period when we were not paying their stipend, no salary, stipend, we were not paying their stipend. They couldn't buy food to eat. So the Cuban doctor said, what is this? And they withdrew the doctors. We used to have more than 200 Cuban doctors in Ghana. How many do we have now? I mean, incredible. Kwame, do you know what is worse? Maza, do you know what is worse? Mm -hmm. Ghana government, not Australian government, Ghana government, has spent money, mm, foreign exchange, to send young Ghanaians oh. to Cuba to go and train as doctors. They have trained as doctors. The Cuban authorities have certified them as doctors. The same certification that their own doctors get. You understand? The same certification that their own doctors get. These young Ghanaians have come back home as qualified doctors. You know they cannot practice. Hmm. And why are they not able to practice? 
They are not able to practice because our authorities insist that they should go and pay some money, huge amount of money, to go to be tested, to be certified again to practice in Ghana. What stupidity is this? In other countries, Final year medical students are being drafted into the field to go and help fight this disease. Mm -hmm. Those who have not finished over, they are drafting them by force to go into the field to go and help. We, we have qualified doctors that we are not allowing to practice because they don't have money to pay to go and sit exams. What kind of a people are we in this situation? In this situation. Look, so many of our citizens, so many of our citizens, are deeply worried and alarmed by the fact that now, officially, the number of infections has reached 132. Officially. My Jove! Kwame, look, if we were to do random mass testing, 132 would be nothing at all. We have 132 cases because we stopped some people from entering into the country and quarantined them. Mm -hmm. 